And guys, common shares are jumping up here from 64 million shares outstanding to a little bit of a red flag here and I'm gonna go over what it is. So welcome to the video, ladies and gentlemen. So we have Tattooed Chef's earnings out. Exciting day for everybody, I am sure. Uh, I know I am, I wanna see exactly what is going on with Tattooed Chef, uh, with Tattooed Chef's earnings. What are they, are they gonna be able to handle inflation? Uh, what is going on? Let's see what the stock price is doing, guys, really, really quick here as they just dropped earnings and the stock is all over the place. So uh, obviously it hit a line of support yesterday. Obviously yesterday had a nice day up. Okay, we're, we're gapping up a little bit and selling off here. So it looks to be jumping up about 2 to 3% pr uh, pre-market right now, guys. All right, so they were expecting negative six and a half cents they came out at negative 17 so obviously they spent a little bit more and let's get into it okay guys we know about the audit situation and the late filing on march 7th we got that in there all right guys let's get into the results here the moment we've been waiting for let's break down this tattooed chef earnings let's see if it's if they're being affected at all by inflation. Obviously, we all know that they're vertically integrated, they're putting out tons of products, and they're on tons of shelves. So we need to see the uh, margins getting better here. So hopefully, that is a big thing we see. Let's go. 2021 fourth quarter financial overview compared to fourth quarter of 2020 rose 32.2% to 53 million. Pretty good there. Tattooed Chef branded products revenue increased 21.7% to 29.2 million or 56% of total revenue. So that's a good sign guys because their best their best returns are probably going to be in this in this division anyway. Net loss was 13.1 million for the quarter. Adjusted EBITDA loss was 11.14. For full year, we had full year revenue of, of that rose 43.7% to a record 213.4 million. Good numbers there, guys. Tattooed Chef branded product revenue increased 56.7%, 132 million or 63% of their revenue. So this is this is good. This should help. This should definitely help margins here. End of the year with 78 branded SKUs, guys. I called that. So over the last two years, they They've gotten into about 10,000 more locations and built some good relationships here. So, you know, I think that's good. I, I don't, yeah, I think that's pretty good, you know, pretty good growth. We're going to be looking more at the full year here. Um, obviously, quarter over quarter was decent, pretty good growth here, guys. So they're still growing. That's what you like to see with a growth company. Um, we got, so cost of goods sold made up about 85% of revenue. 85.5% of revenue last year while cost of goods sold this year made up 90% guys. So, you know, they're they're incurring they're incur incurring definitely more costs here and um, it's obviously affecting their gross profits, okay? Uh, as we can see across the board. Um, you know, that's not necessarily what they promised us, right? I thought that this number, I thought that this number would be getting a little bit better. Now, I know they're paying for growth and they're um, trying to expand, but I really did think, and I, this, this is telling me guys that, um, this is telling me guys that they're definitely dealing with some um, inflationary costs possibly here, okay? Operating expenses absolutely exploded. Wow, that's a pretty big jump. Now, um, you know, that could absolutely be for the Carson facility getting up and running. You know, these are expenses that I was, a, a, these were expenses that I was kind of concerned with. That's kind of another reason why I took a step out of the stock is I know that they have to ramp up. They're dealing with high inflation and they have two other facilities that they have to get staffed and products raw materials too. So that made me in no rush to really buy the stock heavy as a lot of other YouTubers are recommending here. Loss income and operations was almost, it was 37 million. So there's a huge, uh, you know, that's so that's a huge spike, guys. So bottom line is shrinking. Okay, gross profits are shrinking. First, gross profits are definitely shrinking here. And that's, you know, something that they've told us should actually go the opposite way. Um, and then obviously, we know the net losses for operations are extremely high, uh, could could absolutely be for the new facilities and they're ramping up for that. So from 64 million shares to 82.1, that's a heck of a move up in shares, guys. So um, maybe they need to add cash to their balance sheet. Um, I'm not really sure why they, not, that's a pretty,
pretty big jump, guys. That's over a 20% increase year over year on shares. The total cash has come down pretty significantly here, guys. We went from 131 million down to 92 million. So kind of your more of your liquid assets are actually down here, okay, by a pretty good margin. But the total assets somehow came down. I don't know if you guys see that. Total assets somehow came down. That's that's an odd uh, statistic here. Looks like basically assets came down basically due to the uh, deferred income taxes here, okay? All right, guys, so we'll give a couple bright signs here. Um, so overall, guys, when we look at top line growth and what they're doing, it's definitely impressive, okay? But there's a lot of companies out there right now growing revenue at a better rate with better, better margins, okay? So that'd be my first you know, kind of my first red flag overall. Now, is the company growing? Yeah, they're growing. Um, but guys, look, I mean, gross profits are are actually going in the wrong direction here, okay? By a large, by a good margin. You know, having gross profits, you know, gross profits are going in the wrong direction by a large margin. And cost of goods, guys, cost of goods sold skyrocketing, right? And I, I understand that there's going to be costs with, you know, that are going to be costs coming with this. But um, I feel like these, this should be a little bit more under control with the vertical integration that they've basically sold us on. So a few different things here, guys. It looks like margins are going the wrong way and cost of goods are sold are going up. As you're looking at about 10% margins for the quarter, okay, they're guiding 2022 between 10 and 12%. This is the frustrating part, guys, the margins, guys. I think the price of the stock is basically where it needs to be, okay? So when we think about doing 200 you guys the question becomes for me what would i be willing to pay for the stock when i think about revenue increase of 43.7 213 million in sales okay versus 148 good growth there between four to six you know between four to six price to sales i think is fair for the company because their margins are so slim guys okay you're talking about 10 percent margins here it's not like um you're not paying for a fintech company here where margins are 25 percent 30 percent or even 40 percent okay margins are very very low here okay um and they've put some shares on the market which is definitely a liability so overall guys um if we look at that and we take a look at where their market cap is right now and we take a look where their market cap is and i i think overall the stock's responding absolutely appropriately guys i literally just clicked on this i think this is a i think this is appropriate okay i think a 1 billion dollar to 1.2 billion dollar market cap is fair for this company guys absolutely fair for this company um now where is the opportunity is if you're doing your due diligence and you think they're going to grow their margins and that this is just a temporary in, this is just a temporary problem. Well, then, in my opinion, um, you have to start buying the stock and below this, you know, below this market cap. I think this is just an okay earnings. Okay, I think the revenue growth is great. Margins are a problem. Obviously, uh, you know, twenty, almost a twenty mil, million share increase in a year. Because here's what's happening, guys. You're buying Tattooed Chef at eleven dollars and their price to sales is negative or their earnings are negative and then putting more shares on it makes that even worse okay because um, they're diluting your your they're dilute every time they put a share on the market you're diluting their earnings for share as a private stockholder so it's watering down the the negative earnings that they already have so it's like a double negative guys um, so overall i i don't think it's a great report i think top line growth is great but you know, some of my some of my fears are actually showing in um, some of my fears are definitely showing in their stock price. OK, and I think the stock is responding. I think the stock is responding appropriately to to that, guys. As always, appreciate your time. I shoot it straight. Um, overall, I don't think it's a great earnings. I They're growing their top line. I guess that's all you can ask for um, because there's probably things out of their control. So overall, I, I don't think it's a great earnings, but you know they're growing their top line. Hopefully, they can get operational costs under under control, and hopefully, they can grow those margins vertical with that vertically integration that they all sold us on. So, as always, guys, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for spending it with me, and we will see you next time, investors. Peace.